All right, it looks like it's time to uh, get started. So I just wanted to thank everyone for finding the time to be here today uh, as part of our latest uh, session for the online coaching and sharing meeting. Uh, today, we're uh, delighted to welcome Matthew Marek. Um, Matthew is an associate at BFC, for those of you who haven't had the chance to, to work with him. Uh, his main responsibilities include writing and reviewing publications um, communication, research, uh, he's involved with creative development, uh, as well as project coordination. He's kind of got his ha hand in a lot of hats, or he's wearing a lot of hats at BFC. Uh, today, Matthew is going to share with us the story of narrative, um, which he's going to give us um, some of the structures that underpin creative works and define how we communicate. Um, if you are interested in this topic, after you're hearing uh, Matthew's presentation, be sure to go check out BFC Green. Um, where you can see his lifestyle cluster, uh, the secrets of storytelling, and there's also other lifestyle clusters that you can check out there with lots of great information. Um, you can also go to the iShare uh, Facebook group, which also has lots of good information um, on this as well as other topics. Uh, so be sure to check those out when we are done today. And I just want to remind you that our next meeting will be in two weeks on March 23rd, where Matthew will also talk about the magic of cinema. But for now, just sit back, relax, and uh, let's listen to the story of narrative. So uh, without further ado, take it away, Matthew. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. And uh, thank you much, Brian, for your introduction. Uh, today, I'll be speaking about the story of narrative. Narrative is all around us. Um, humans have been telling stories for thousands of years. And narrative has been utilised in a vast array of different mediums, be it books, films, photographs, advertisements. Then you tell a joke, or then you tell someone about your day. And ultimately, how we define ourselves as people. Sometimes the narrative you tell will be complex, sometimes very simple. But all communication is telling a story. And today I will be presenting a few fundamental concepts that can be applied in a general sense to the expression of narrative. First up is inspiration. There is inspiration behind every story, some spark that starts it all off. This is why the story is being told and will be closely entwined with the goal the narrative is trying to achieve. Common examples of inspiration include beauty, sadness, humour, awe, and of course love, probably the most common of all inspirations and the basis for pretty much every Hollywood blockbuster. Okay, so the storyteller is inspired, but what makes the audience pay attention to him? Intrigue, otherwise known as the hook. There are many ways to achieve this, and new ones are always being invented. A common hook would be an unusual premise, like this iconic photo of construction workers casually eating their lunch on top of a skyscraper. It captures your attention and makes you want to know more about what's going on. In this sense, this picture to the right is, is actually telling a story. Another hook would be creating an air of mystery or focusing on extraordinary characters like a superhero or someone with special talents. Some like to create an atmosphere of suspense, as famously used by Hitchcock in films like The Bard or Vertigo. And once the audience is hooked, a story will benefit from some context. All narratives have some type of external context. This could be a photo taken on a meaningful day, or a book written during, during a time of critical turmoil. Context could also extend to how a story is actually being presented through thought medium, 
So, you know, is it a film? Is it a book? Is it a speech? And who the target audience is, this always things will affect the story being told. So you get that idea, but having a clear understanding of context also enables storytellers to elevate the narratives, providing a deeper meaning. Here's an example. This is a rather nice photo of a man hugging his wife. Some of you may recognize him as former U.S. President Barack Obama. Let's add some context. This is actually Obama winning re election in 2012, right after he won. The context here adds substantial emotional heft and allows the audience to gain a better idea of their emotions being experienced. Not to mention that some people looking at this photo will have a personal stake in it. Uh, so supporters and opponents of Obama were probably in top of this photo quite differently. Some seeing it as a very positive and happy thing, others seeing it as perhaps a okay with. This is Obama again, but this time he is inside a helicopter staring at the White House. What is the context of this photo? It could have been taken on countless occasions. There's actually Obama leaving the White House on the day he passed on the presidency to a person who is in many ways his political opposite and who promised to undo much of his work. In this context, Obama is no longer staring at just his former home, but at his legacy. Taken together, um, and that's a part of external context, but there's also the context of how a story is being presented. These two photos taken side by side create a strong contrast. Fits in turn illustrates the great changes in the political orientation of an entire country. The two previous stories told by each of these photos have now combined into a new story that carries much more depth. And that's all because of context. Next up is the concept of control. This is a command amongst one of the most important things to remember, both as a storyteller and as a member of an audience. So I'm going to say it very slowly and clearly, and I might repeat it as well. The storyteller has full control of the narrative being presented. The storyteller has full control of the narrative being presented. We are the master of destinies in fictional works. This allows the storyteller to fully utilize psychological techniques to enable the story to have the greatest effect. Let's take a look at emotional engineering. This is important to any good narrative. It can be used to emphasize points humanize statistics, and attach the audience to characters. And there are many techniques to achieve this. But from an audience point of view, it is important to remember that the use of emotion can be used to convince us of bad ideas, to hide inconvenient facts, or to make extreme circumstances appear much more common than they actually are. This is especially important in news stories. Health epidemics and other perceived threats are quite commonly escalated on an emotional level beyond the actual likelihood of someone being affected by it. Then, of course, there is a mission. The idea of never letting a bad fact get in the way of a good story. It's not as misleading as it sounds though. Well. Omission is essential to creating a robust narrative and an enticing story. You know, nobody has to know every detail. But like emotional engineering, it is worth keeping at the back of your mind when you're an audience member. You never know what has been left out. Narrative control also allows the storyteller to manage audience expectations. 
This is how storytellers are able to surprise audience members and make a work more engaging. They anticipate what the target audience will be thinking and expecting to happen next. And this can be utilised in all sorts of different mediums, including presentations and proposals. So um, here's an example of narrative control. Remember that photo I showed earlier of a man eating with ants on top of a skyscraper? It was actually staged. It's a posed photo. However, the photo does reflect a specific culture that existed in New York at the time. And those men were real construction workers who did the work hundreds of feet in the air, often in dangerous conditions. It would be unlikely that a photographer would happen upon such a scene naturally. In that sense, the staging is what allowed this story to be told at all. Speaking of control, key to tapping into an audience's emotion is resonance. In other words, let the audience do the work. This is making use of preconceived ideas or feelings uh, fits for start to enhance the emotional power of a story. This is exactly what the latest Star Wars film with its heavy use of the cinema goers around them are reminded of how we feel in watching the original movies. And it made them feel good. And the film is one of the most successful of all time. Another good example of resonance is the opening montage from Pixar's Up. This is famous for making people cry. The filmmakers were able to convey such emotional weight by skillfully resonating with the audience's own experiences of family, partners, and relationships. It shows a true mastery of cinema, and I recommend it to anyone who hasn't seen it. A conflict of some sort is essential to establishing a strong narrative. Indeed, the most basic structure of a narrative includes a beginning, a middle, an end, and a conflict. This conflict can take many forms, but the classic ones used in stories are person versus person, person versus nature, Parson versus society, and parson versus self. In practice, this often takes the form of things like good versus evil, but conflict can be less dramatic as well. Then, presenting ideas, a good narrative will paint a picture of the alternative to what is being proposed. The conflict then becomes my idea versus anything that isn't my idea. For instance, one could begin a proposal for renewable energy installation by illustrating some of the negative consequences of fossil fuels. This approach helps the audience to understand the differentiating factors of the idea of being proposed. So it's powerful not just in fictional works, but in non-fictional works and also when you're trying to convince someone of something you believe in. And that brings me to honesty. All the best narratives are honest. They convey something the storyteller believes to be true. This may not be the case in real life. It may even be completely false, but the storyteller will want to share something that is authentic to them. And it doesn't have to mean that the story itself is true, but there'll be some, something within it that we think is. Maybe it's an idea, perhaps a, a moral message, uh, maybe it's just a feeling someone had, or a hope for how we want things to be. All the best narratives are honest, they are authentic, and this authenticity will shine through. So, in summary, Narratives are all about us in life. 
including photographs, advertisements, movies, and pretty much anything else. I covered a few of the key concepts which are used to create them, including the ideas of context, conflict, and control. But every approach is distinct, and every medium will lend itself to different stories. Something that works well as a film may not work well as a book. Something that is great in a speech may be difficult to convey in a photograph. And at the end of the day, we are all storytellers. The question becomes, what stories do we want to tell? Thank you very much for your attention, and I'd be delighted to answer any questions you may have. Thanks again. All right, uh, well, first of all, thank you. That was an interesting uh, presentation and an interesting subject, especially when you think about narrative as day-to-day uh, -day life and you know, telling stories to, to friends and families, even what happened during the day. Um, I just want to open up again. Does anyone have any questions for Matthew at this point? If not, uh, I have a, a couple of questions. Um, from your experience in uh, thinking about this and researching it, what do you what do you think is one of the more effective mediums for uh, communicating um, a message, or do you think it depends upon what you're trying to do? I mean, that's that's a good question, and I think it's a question that when you want to communicate a message, everyone will have to consider themselves. So some messages. Um, will lend themselves well to particular mediums. Um, but at the same time, it also depends on the person who is communicating that message. So if you're a very skilled photographer, you may be able to capture the most amazing moments and actually tell a story of, uh, you know, love, friendship, or, or loss, depending on, on how you can pose that photograph. Um, mm -hmm. But if you're, you know, a more talented writer or auditor, then that would probably be a better medium to go down. That's that's one of the beauties of storytelling is that there's so many ways to approach a similar theme from different angles. And another thing to bear in mind is the target audience, who you're actually telling the story to, and what will they respond to. For me, I, I would say, you know, I I think. Uh, uh, filmmaking has has a lot of great potential, um, but a combination of of you know video, written word, and photographs can create a very in depth, versatile story. Um, and what you're starting to see on on the internet, a websites actually using multimedia approaches to tell a particular story. So you'll go onto a, a website and have a feature act. We'll have a, a photograph, maybe a video we can watch, uh, as well as having uh, written words that go along with it, and this covers a lot of different bases. Mm -hmm. I guess playing off that a little bit, um, you mentioned the internet. Do you think, uh, have you thought about what future trends might be for other platforms or other ways of uh, getting your sto a person's story across, especially in the light of modern technology? Uh, yes, I mean, definitely the, the internet allows stories to be shared in a way that's really never been seen before in, in, in human history. Um, you have websites dedicated to, to people, you know, blogging and uh, people can post their own photographs, people can make a film and put it on YouTube. You're, you're seeing uh, countless musicians whose, whose careers actually started on YouTube. So these are just people sitting in a room, doing something they love, and sharing it with the rest of the world and, and telling the story in that way. So in, in that sense, in, in the idea of actually sharing the stories, the, the internet is the most powerful tool we have. Mm -hmm. Do you think that, the, that it's actually shaping the way that we tell our stories too? Uh, and yeah. changing that? Yeah. Yes, 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 definitely, almost, almost certainly. I mean, um, if you think of day-to-day -day storytelling, 
um, you know, speaking to your friends or uh, trying to present yourself to the world, you know, your personal brand, then things like social media, uh, you know, Facebook and Twitter are definitely defining a pure approach to that. Um, it's making it shorter, it was making it more condensed and people are putting a lot more of their lives on display and trying to weave that into a story. I mean, you, you often hear people uh, talk about how they, they have an Instagram account or, or something and they're, they're posting photos of a holiday, but we're being very selective with what we're posting. And mm-hmm. we're trying to tell the story of, of what we, of how we want people to perceive them. Um, so, so I would say that it's uh, driving people to, to tell more stories. It's driving people to tell more stories about themselves. And often it's driving people to actually tell kind of like shorter stories with, with many episodes. So mm-hmm. you have status, you know, or you have a Twitter, and you're, you're talking to say 140 characters, uh, or you post a single image, but then you can take it all together and weave it together into a much larger story. Mm-hmm. Uh, looks like there was a, a question from Victor. Um, what about science fiction and true story? I'm not exactly sure what that is in reference to at this point. Uh, Victor, could you uh, chime in a little bit and if you have your, your microphone connected and maybe explain what that was in reference to? I'm sorry, I missed it. Uh, good afternoon, good evening. The, the question is that some, you know, just writers, they, they, they use to, to write a story just based on their imagination and it's far away from the kind of, of true stories. What about this connection, you know, just stories based on pure fiction or science fiction and, and just true stories? Oh, oh, oh yeah, yes, I mean, I can completely. Um, I mean, uh, when I say that the best stories are, are honest, what I was meaning is we're trying to convey something that someone believes in. So even if you take science fiction, you know, a, a story based in a faraway galaxy on, on some planet, so so often, uh, even though it's a purely imagined world, it will be inspired by people's experiences and the world around them. And in, in many ways, science fiction is, is some of the the best critical critique that we actually have. Um, and people can, can create extreme versions of the world we live in and uh, pray with ideas and critical ideas. Um, and, and yeah, I, I think it's a, a very powerful tool, uh, but the, the fundamental narrative concepts still very much apply. Thank you. When you were um, going through your presentation, you mentioned uh, love as being a very common um, inspiration. Do you think, do you find within a lot of narratives that there are, I guess, certain inspirations that seep into other inspirations? I don't know if my question makes a lot of sense. Um, I'm just still trying to formulate it in my head. Um, I guess, do you think there's one overall goal of narrative? There was the one that tends to be more frequent than others. I mean, besides love, or do you find that that, that tends to be the the main goal of storytelling? Um, I think the main goal of storytelling is to make people feel something, um, and this can be applied in a very broad sense. So, when you're watching a, an, an action movie or or, or you know, some, something like that. You, you, so sometimes the, the storyteller just wants to make the audience feel excited or you know, elated or you know, leaving the cinema feeling really good about themselves or something along those lines. And, and love is a very common one because it's such a, a strong feeling that people have, so it's very easy to feel inspired by it. Um, but at the same time, the, the goal of a narrative could be to make someone, uh, you know, feel really positively about an idea you have. You know, if you're trying to, if you're making a proposal about something, then you create an narrative for it. You know, if you're, you're beginning, middle and end, and 
uh, you make it enticing, you add an intrigue, you might be able to get some conflicts in there. And you present it in such a way that you want the audience member to walk away and think, yeah, that's that's a good thing. I want to get behind that. I want to get behind this person. Uh, so, so that's that's very different to them in, in that in that um, use of narrative, but it's still trying to get someone to feel something. Mm-hmm. Maybe this is a bit more of a, I guess. Uh, maybe it's going a little bit too deep, but I guess uh, once a narrative is out there, once a story is out there. Who does it belong to, in your opinion? Does it belong still to the author, or does it belong to the audience? <laughs> that's a that's a very interesting question. And um, I mean, in in my view, it it, it doesn't really belong to anyone. <laughs> um, you have the story; it's, it's it's out there, and the author can can release a new story. We can tweak it. We can change it. But that that original story will still will still be there. And if you look back over human history, then you have the same you know, stories were told uh, orally. We were, we were passed down from generation to generation, and we we often trained. And um, in in that sense, you could be happy with telling for effects of the same story, but in very different ways. Um, and then someone is listening to a story, then we are taking in a story. We can have completely different feelings about it to what the author intended, uh, but that doesn't mean that was are wrong to have those feelings. It's it's just whatever you you happen to feel. Um, so in that sense, it belongs to to the audience. Uh, but in the sense of the author's right to to train the story, I would say once the original is out there, it's out there. Um, but we can always go ahead and read a different version of that story. Maybe I'll speak to someone else in, in mm-hmm. a different way. Yeah, sorry for if I threw you a little bit of a curveball there. But, uh, oh, it no. popped into my mind. Well, um, very interesting. And uh, you hear it talk about it all, all the time with um, Star Wars and original trilogy and that type of thing. Yeah, and that's kind of what came into mind. I, there's a lot of people that get upset by the changes that are made, and some people say he owns it, and others say, no, it belongs to the world now. But um, anyway, um, we have a couple minutes left here. Did it, anybody else have a question that they, they wanted to ask to Matthew about narrative or, or storytelling? Um, if no one else has a question, I just want to remind you again that um, our next uh, online coaching and sharing meeting will be on March 23rd. Uh, Matthew is going to present again on the magic of cinema this time. Um, so if you're a film enthusiast, um, you, can, you can look forward to kind of learning uh, some behind the scenes, exploring story structure, plot devices, and uh, how movie makers engage audiences to, to tell an interesting story via the cinema. Um, I also just want to remind you again to go ahead and check out uh, bfc.green, the website. You can find Matthew's lifestyle cluster there on the secrets of storytelling, as well as other uh, clusters related to green, green living, uh, uh, healthy cooking, healthy living, um, just lots of general information to help you enrich your life. Um, And you can also check out the iShare Facebook group as well, has lots of good information Uh, from the same. The link is uh, over there in the chat. Um, So we hope to see you next time. Thank you again, Matthew, and thank you uh, everyone for making the time to be able to join us today. We greatly appreciate it and hope you have a fantastic rest of your day.